What's up YouTube and welcome back to the channel. So as you guys already know, I put the new wheels on the Land Cruiser and unfortunately they rub. It's unfortunate but not unexpected. So today in this video, I'm going to try to address that problem and fix the rubbing issues on the 100 series Land Cruiser. Check it out. So first of all, let's go over the wheel specs and the tire size. Obviously, these are my TE37Xs. They're size 16 by 8 with a zero offset. The tire size is a 315-7516. Exactly the same tires that I had on the Land Cruiser before, but with the stock wheels. Um, the stock wheels had the spacer, the one and a half inch spacer, and it was fine as far as clearance goes. But with the without the spacer, with the new wheels, uh, the zero offset, obviously the wheel still sticks out a little bit more than before it does rub so let me show you where we actually have two points of major rubbing the first one being the driver side front wheel right behind the rear bumper i don't know if you can see that um, it actually rubs barely on the lip i first i thought was this but this is only a scratch from something else but it's rubbing right here so that shouldn't be too bad to clearance but we also have something on the other side the other side is a little bit more severe, so this is the passenger side uh, behind the front wheel, and as you can see, it's tearing up the inner fender liner already. In a previous video when I first put on the uh, spacers and the 315s, I had already clearanced a lot of the back of the, the, the fender liner or whatever, um, so there's not much more to go. I mean, there is, but there's going to involve a lot more cutting. Um, so what the plan is, is to use the factory uh, alignment adjusters uh, on the control arms and push the wheel as far forward as possible, um, for this side at least. The other side we'll have to look and see, probably just to get it to even out. But um, after I push the wheel as forward as we can, then we'll use the SPC upper uh, control arm adjustments to make sure that the caster is on point. Now to do that, we'll probably have to end up taking it to a Lyman shop, but I think it'll be well worth it. So before any adjustments are made, let's measure the wheel to fender gap. I'm going to measure from the tire to the corner of the fender on the driver's side. Looks like it's about two and three quarter inch space. On the passenger side, looks like it is roughly about two and a little bit over a half a little bit over two and a half inch space so there definitely is less space between this this area on the passenger side compared to the driver's side let's take a look and see where the cams are pointing as of right now uh, in the back one on the passenger side it looks like the control arm is pushed all the way out in the front, looks like it is also pushed all the way out. I think that's to compensate for where this bolt is. I believe the guy that did the alignment previously didn't adjust the camber with uh, this top bolt right here, which he should have. But let's go check the driver's side. On the driver's side rear, it looks like it is pushed all the way out. And on the front, the front is slightly in. I don't know if you can see that, but the front is slightly inwards. So that would explain why on the driver's side, it hits the front bumper as opposed to the back of the fender. My game plan is to have the passenger side mimic the driver's side, meaning having the passenger side instead of completely straight, turn it in a little bit like this basically pull in that front cam so that way instead of hitting the back of the fender it will hit a little bit on the uh, front bumper and that is a lot easier to trim because the front bumper is just a piece of plastic as opposed to the the back of the fender where you've got the uh, fender liner you've got the fender itself you've got the pinch weld all that stuff plus i already trimmed that a lot of that um, so i don't think there's much more to go so let me try to adjust these cams and um, see where we're at. Okay, so this is after the adjustment. Let me show you guys what I did. So for the, this is the passenger side, by the way, for the passenger rear cam, I have it set all the way pushed outwards. So it's maxed out uh, towards the outside of the vehicle. And in the front, 
I have the uh, cam set in the center. Remember before it was also maxed out, but now it's in the middle. So it basically pulled the front in a little bit. This should give me a little bit more uh, room on the back of the fender. Um, so I won't, I shouldn't rub right here anymore. Um, I should actually rub in the front bumper area. But uh, let's put the wheel back on, put the car back on the ground and uh, check the measurements. Okay, so now with the wheel back on and the wheels settled, I rolled it forward and back. Let's see what the spacing is on the back compared to before. Right now on the driver's side, it looks like it is about three inches. So a little bit more than before. Let's check the passenger side. Passenger side looks like two and seven eighths. So still a little bit more than before. I think the passenger side, we can still do a little bit more adjustment to match the three up front. But what I'm gonna do next is to drive it around the block and see how we fare as far as the front goes. Because remember, now that we pushed the wheel forward in the car, it might not hit the, the back anymore, but it's more than likely gonna hit the front where the bumper is. So um, let's see what happens. After the test drive, it definitely hits the front, uh, the bumper, a lot more than before. The rear is a lot less. On the driver's side, it is barely anything, even going up the driveway. So when it's like articulating, um, it's barely hitting. On the passenger side, it is also a lot better. The uh, rear still hits a little bit more than I'd like. So what I'll probably do is try to adjust the passenger side a little bit more so it gets three inches of space between the wheel and the back of the fender. That way it'll match the driver's side. And then from there, I can start doing a little bit of uh, trimming uh, either on the bumper, well obviously, and uh, maybe also on the pinch weld a little bit more. So we'll see uh, how that goes. After a few more adjustments, we got the driver's side at exactly three inches and the passenger side at almost, almost three inches. It is two and seven eighths. So really close. Obviously these measurements are very, very inaccurate. They're just kind of like a ballpark guidance uh, for me as far as adjusting the caster goes. Um, next step, what I'll have to do is start to trim a little bit of the uh, inner fender. You can see here, there's still a lot of the pinch weld that needs to be trimmed and maybe uh, a little bit of the fender. And then of course on the front, obviously we have a little bit more trimming to do because if you remember, we basically moved the wheel more forward and now it's hitting right here. So what I've noticed seems like it hits on the inside lip of the bumper first right here. And so what I'm going to have to do is start trimming that guy right there and then slowly, maybe I'll do half at first. And then if that still doesn't work, I'll go all the way to the edge right here. So I'll follow the curve of the, uh, the uh, follow the factory curve of the bumper. So that way, when you look at it, it won't look like it's all cut gnarly or anything like that. I want to keep the, uh, you know, the kind of like a factory look, but um, have it not rub. So uh, let's see what happens with the wheel off and the inner fender liner kind of tucked away up here we can see where we need to cut so as you can tell this pinch weld was previously cut by me already but clearly it wasn't enough and the most important part is actually this corner right here this is where the tire would hit so i'm going to try to make a cut as straight as i can down this tape line of course, the fender will need to be trimmed a little bit. As you can see, the fender's already kind of bent backwards from the tire hitting. So what I'm gonna do is, again, cut as best as I can along this blue tape line, and then up right here. I still wanna retain this little tab. This can be bent forward and back. This tab is for the inner fender liner, so that way it blocks you know, maybe half of the dirt that goes into the, uh, into the, you know, this cavity right here. And I uh, definitely want that there, you know, just to like, so there's not less mud and water and all that stuff gets stuck in there. But um, let's see what I can do.
The angle grinder actually made short work of the pinch weld and the fender, so um, it was a little bit uh, tricky, but um, I did cut the fender first. And then once I did that, I had access to the pinch weld, a little bit better access to the pinch weld, should I say. And um, basically we cut that. So now if you look at the side, you can see the pinch weld would probably normally go all the way out to here. We're almost like an inch of extra clearance right there. Plus the fender has been trimmed as well. So this should be more than enough clearance. Next thing I'll have to do is probably touch it up with a little bit of black paint so that way it doesn't rust. And then after that, we are working on the front bumper. So basically I just quickly sprayed some satin black on the uh, fenders where I cut so that way it won't rust and you know it's not the best job at all obviously because nobody would probably see this it's literally just to uh, prevent rust from happening now on to the front bumper we can see um, I marked it off right here this is where I'm gonna cut and you can see down here it goes back in so we're basically just cutting this little corner right here um, we're not going too deep into the bumper if we need to we can cut more but um, I think we should cut this first, see how uh, how much clearance we have after. I think it should be enough. If it's not, I'll go a little bit deeper and um, we'll see what happens. So in the front we cut maybe about half an inch to three quarter inch and look at all that extra clearance we have now. So right now the tire shouldn't hit. Remember it was only hitting like this tiny corner um, before. So right now with an extra at least three quarter inch of uh, clearance it should fit. So um, now let's uh, do the other side. So on the driver's side, the cutting seemed to be a lot easier. Seems like previously when I did this side of the pinch weld, uh, I cut a lot more. Um, that's probably another reason why that the driver's side wasn't, as, uh, wasn't rubbing as much as the passenger side was. All I needed to do was trim the fender down a little bit more just in case. Then in the front, we did the same thing with the bumper where we cut most of the inside out, but we still left a little bit of a curve. Now what that equates to is a little bit more structural rigidity for the bumper. It won't be all floppy. If you cut it all the way to the end, it'll get all floppy. Plus you keep that stock look. So it looks uh, more or less stock still, which is kind of what I'm going for. Um, so uh, next let's uh, put on the wheels and uh, see if it rubs. Now the moment of truth. Uh, usually going up and down the driveway, I uh, tend to hit the uh, back a lot, especially when I'm turned, and then the front on the other side. So let's put the camera down and back up out of the driveway and uh, see if we did a good job or we need uh, a little bit more trimming. So it looks like the trimming did do some good. As you can see, when the wheel is closest to the fender, I still have roughly about an inch worth of space. So uh, that should uh, be enough for any type of articulation or bumps or whatever, because uh, the independent front suspension, there's not that much articulation. On the front of the other side where we used to hit, now does not hit at all anymore. Again, we have about 
three quarters to about an inch worth of space even when it's at its closest point so that should be more than enough as far as uh, clearance goes for uh, bumps and turning and all that stuff uh, I did drive it up and down the driveway pretty quick, uh, quicker than I normally would with the wheel turned at an angle and it seems to be okay. Actually, let's try the other side real quick. So I thought I had heard something right here, but as you can see, uh, the tire barely touches that little rubber piece, the, the uh, inner fender liner. Now, that's the reason why this side touches and the other side doesn't is because remember the other side got ripped, so I had to trim a lot more off. So um, what I'll probably have to do is uh, trim this side exactly like the other side, so that way um, uh, it won't touch at all. So um, that's one thing that uh, looks like it needs to be uh, touched up a little bit. But if we check the other side front, the front of the passenger side, um, as you can see, this is as close as it's going to get. And I don't think it'll ever touch. Um, again, we've got about half an inch to three quarter of an inch worth of space right here. And, um, you know, when it's closest like this, it's only at this particular steering angle. When it's at full lock, it's going to clear with way more space. When it's going straight, again, way more space. So this is as close as it's going to get. And I don't think it's going to touch. I think we're okay as far as the front bumper goes. So the only side that we need to trim is going to be the driver's side uh, inner fender liner, which is relatively easy. We can do with a pair of scissors. And that is it for this video guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button. If you didn't, hit that like button anyways and let me know why in the comments down below. As always, for more Land Cruiser and Overland content, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.